The year is 2020. Madonna is sitting in a bathtub of milk and flowers, canceling herself. (laughs) I am sitting on my couch, facing the wall, because Brad can't come here to record this episode. (laughs) Surprise, everyone. We're back to the future. Yeah, we are. You know, Dua came out with Future Nostalgia, and so did we. Exactly. We planned this all along with her. (laughs) <laughs> right so <laughs> surprise everyone um we well i went through the archives of britney podcast and i stumbled upon a little known episode labeled zero zero one dot wave <laughs> and i was like what was that <laughs> and i realized that brad and i back what this was like was it june summer June yeah. or July of 2018, mm-hmm. back when we were still allowed outside. Right. And I got this equipment and I was like, oh, you need to come over here because I need to test this stuff before, you know, future things happened in October. And we sat and recorded with our mics and we didn't have stands and I didn't know what I was doing. And we recorded it and never posted it. And now we still don't know what we're doing, but we do have mic stands. Yeah. <laughs> We do have mic stands, and I can record Brad from an iPhone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I pulled it out of the archives, and I edited it, and I edited ed- Why can't I say the word edited? Edited. Edited. T- whatever. But it's here now. We did this thing where we debated the top 10 Britney songs of all time. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and listening back, I still stand by what I said two years ago. I mean... Some things might need some updating in the in the wake of different current events, but yeah, I was, I I stand by it. Yeah, so we wanted to get that out there for all of you to have something to listen to and to continue to celebrate our queen because a lot of you guys have been revisiting the podcast or just finding the podcast. Welcome. <laughs> so, without further ado, here are Bradley and I's top 10 Britney songs that we thought at the time of summer 2018. Yeah, as of summer 2018, but maybe also now. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, I'm T. Kyle. Hey, I'm Bradley Stern. This This is is our our new new Britney. (laughs) Yeah, no, No, that that doesn't work. work. Hey, I'm T. Kyle. And I'm Bradley Stern. And this is It's Britney, Bitch. A podcast for stands, by stands, dedicated to 20 years of the living legend, Britney Jean Spears. Let me sit my Red Bull. I'm like low key worried. Not sponsored. That the earphones will fall. Maybe not. I have other ones too. If you want to try them. Okay, so in today's episode, I feel like I should do a couple like throws. Yeah. In case we wind up switching it. Right. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing something very important. All right. So what are we talking about today? We're going to be having a very important debate. Probably the most important debate ever, <laughs> and that is what are the ten best Britney Spears songs. Of all time, in my opinion and in your opinion. Right. This is something I've dreaded for a while. Yes. um, I had an easier time with this one (laughs) because I had a playlist already that I made like a year ago. And I was like, oh, what is this? And I was like, oh, this is my top 15 songs. So I had to cut out five. For me, it's it's much more of a a Sophie's Choice situation. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't... uh, When somebody asks what my favorite is, I laugh because that's just never going to happen. But... 10 I can work with Mm -hmm. so slightly this is in no particular order for me is it for you no absolutely no order okay and we don't know each other's list we don't know each other's list we have not discussed we have not it is completely a surprise Mm -hmm. although I do I will say I feel like a lot of people know I do have a number one I will say I have an ultimate top number one and I feel like everyone knows what it is I think so too so maybe I think the people of Vine know it I think most it's yes (laughs) so we should save her for the end yeah let's do that because I have a feeling she'll be on both of ours Mm -hmm. well she better be exactly and and yours at home that's right um so should we just go through this like back and forth one at a time yeah i think what we can do is talk about yeah pick randomly it's like a game of family feud basically yeah and if you've got it too you can just chime in with your thoughts about why it is iconic as or well. why it's not or why it's oh, not but they all are yeah right just kidding 
Although I, I have such weird picks that people are probably going to come for me, but that's fine. I feel I, like prepared. you are more like you are very much more into the sonic yeah. sounds and the producing and the writing, right? The mixing, the <laughs> you know all the people's names that are listed on the back of the album cover, right? And I'm much more like moments, moments. Like songs that have moments. Memeable songs. That too. Yes. But also like everyone has a um, an impact, if well, you will. I just, when it comes down to favorites, I just feel like it's not necessarily the obvious singles. If you're asking me to do a top 10 danceable songs, that's going to be a different list than songs that just mean something Basically, to me. Ne- next episode on. Oh, yeah. Sneak Top hey. 10 ballads. Top 10. Mm, are yes. there even 10? The, yeah, uh, there are. Yes. The shadow Absolutely. 10 times. That's all we need. Um, yeah. So why don't we why don't we go through these one by one? You can begin and uh, I'll chime in if I also have that one. Okay. So again, these are in no particular order. Just so don't dr- don't come for don't me. Don't come don't for Don't drag us. me with the placement of which ones these are in. Right. I'm going to say first up, three. Oh. Do you have that one? I don't, and I considered oh. it for a long time. Right? I have a weird history with three. Uh, well, is it, does it involve it's um, n- fans? Not. <laughs> <laughs> I can draw from personal experience, but that was not where I was going with it. I was going to say, I th- I thought I had always loved that song, obviously, and I checked back to my earliest writings, and it appears that my idiot self back in college didn't care for the video for it. Wow. And I guess that ruined the experience of the song for me. In retrospect, it's great, but go on and tell me why. Okay, so I feel like... Well, let's talk about the video quickly. Let's talk about the video. I was in college as well, and I remember it had a huge hype to it. Yes. On like BritneySpears.com. Yes. Those awful watermarks. Yes. It was like the pink and blue website, Mm -hmm. and it had this huge buildup, and I was in the middle of class when it was supposed to premiere, and I was able to get my professor to stop class so that everyone could gather around. And if there are any of you that were in my class, it was environmental design, that poor professor, but he agreed and was like, yeah, sure. And we all gathered around and everyone was like, oh, why did she do her hair? Oh, yeah. The but hair. like, it was still, you know, it was still very Britney. But Completely. the reason why this is in my top 10 is because I felt like this was a random song that she just put out that became a hit overnight. Like in a week, it was like number one and everyone loved it. Yeah, it was like her stands, first number one since Baby. Was it? Sorry, Baby. It no, was like the it was like her third baby. number one of all time. It was her third number one after it was Baby and then, oops, I think. Yeah, and, and then, then she didn't really ever three. get them for a long time. Right. In because the mainstream. She's never, she's never been a chart girl, to be honest. I mean, I think Toxic was nine. Um, So this was like a weird surprise smash. Mm-hmm. Totally. It was a huge smash. So catchy. And then it had that director's cut video, which was so fierce. Oh, the director's like, cut. hair. Yes. And the leotard. Right. And like, and just the... every time I'm on the subway and I'm just like holding the rail on top, I just feel like I'm in the video. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, do you feel, do you have that experience? I, I do. I, I'm so fascinated by the, those shots of her like rolling on the ground literally and like touching the, the bunt again, like she has mm-hmm. in the sauna, the steam room, the steam room, which the gays can relate. The gays can relate. She, and that was, of course, the beginning, as she's done so often, is done that perfume promo. She's, like, picking up the eyelash curler or whatever, mm-hmm. or the mascara wand. And there is a bottle of fantasy, I believe. Yeah. Fantasy uh, and curious, I think. And curious, yeah. And obviously that continued for a long time in her videos. Um, my, In retrospect, it was kind of the transition to adult Britney. It was. It was uh, right before Femme Fatale. It was like a was. random like singles collection moment. Some might say the the last time that she kind of had the fire in the eyes for a while. Oh, we're going there early uh, this early. I, I I think I don't think anyone is really a real stan will deny that something happened during the femme fatale era oh, yes. in the videos. But anyway, um, yeah, great video in retrospect, yep, iconic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's my first pick. Great. So so what about you? <clears throat> for me, my first one, I'm going to go. <laughs> with i'm telling you my picks are kind of weird uh i stand by this uh my first one is don't hang up wow i know that is so random i wanted to go random first so don't hang up was my ringtone through the entirety of college oh oh, (laughs) college yes because it came out as an in the zone bonus track slash dvd audio special so good 
Um, I, I think it is entirely underrated, obviously, and I find it to be very Janet Jackson esque. I think I it's like so sexy, so in the zony, uh, and I just find it like endlessly replayable. Like I always, it just puts me in the mood. It's so chill, sexy, everything she does well. I think it it really encapsulates like who she is. It's like mm-hmm. breathy, slutty, but like good slutty, classy slutty. I don't know how to describe it. Right, that, but it's also like kind of an innocent song. Yeah. Yeah, and it's about phone sex, which right. It's you like know. Uh, it's like wrapped in innocence. Yeah, it, but it was secretly very dirty. Definitely, and you know, it was at a time where people were still having phone sex, which now we have our Snapchats right. and Back our in the day Instagrams. When you do remember people's phone numbers. Remember, yes. Um, I don't know. It just really uh, takes me there, and just literally the the chorus, obviously, because it was my ringtone forever. Like triggers that feeling in me of like youth, youth, <laughs> which has gone by, uh, and yeah, it brings me back there. So don't hang up uh, is a in the zone gem. Wow. Yeah, I know. Weird. No, it's a good one. Um, well, speaking of in the zone, Uh-oh. my next one, which I definitely think you have on your list as well. Let's see. Is Breathe on Me. Yes, absolutely. This, I know we're not putting anything in order, <laughs> but this might be top three, uh, honestly, yes. ever. But like this song, I feel like is one is her favorite. Yeah. We, we kind of have, no, we, we know can that, infer from of. Piece of Me. The fact that she still dances to it. Yeah. Like over 13 years later. And I feel like that song could be released today and mm-hmm. would be a smash. Absolutely. Like, I mean, she's forcing it to be released when she performed it on award shows in 2016. Oh, so good. Absolutely. And there was a gay who who shall not be named that mm. when she was performing that at the Billboard Music Awards <laughs> during that medley screamed, is this her new song? Let's, we and should I drag literally, him. We should. <laughs> she deserves to be dragged, she but she does. would not be. And I was like, are you kidding me? Fake fan. Literally fake fan. <sighs> but Breathe On Me is so good. She's performed it at every single tour since... Onyx, honestly, right? Yeah. Yes, she has. She was up in the sky during the circus tour doing it in picture frames. Oh, my God. Did she do it during Femme Fatale tour? Maybe not. Oh. I don't know. I can't no. remember now. Yeah. Femme Fatale was a little more... Um, it was very Femme Fatale heavy. Uh, and then, like, Egyptian, give me more. And, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Breathe, Breathe on, on Me, so a live staple. The yes. live ABC special. If you have not seen that, YouTube it right now. Pause Absolutely. this and go to YouTube and type in Breathe On Me mm-hmm. live. Also, when she did this at like, what was it? The um, the Palms. She like did it yep. on like all those. Did it during <sighs> that surprise tour of the nightclubs and so Splash. Good with the fans and, and Little Chase Lounge. Mm-hmm. Oh, iconic. Another signature, Brittany. Those like slick pants and the, yeah. I think that is one of her most signature songs, despite not being a single. I think that is the most iconically Britney song, without a doubt. And I can say that I don't have a favorite Britney song, but if you catch me on the right day, like, that is the song. And I, there's something about the pulse of that song mm-hmm. that is so, like, horny or just, like, perfect. I don't know what both of those it's like words. It's slow, but you can hair flip to it. Yeah. Everyone, like, really loses their mind when you put it on at the club. Um, yeah, I, I think... I, and we can't forget, you know, monogamy is the way to go. Like, mm-hmm. throwing in that Lauren Bacall line and, and just... Ugh. God, it's a perfect song. And I believe in my interview with Steve Anderson, who co-wrote it, co-produced, that was a song that they quickly wrote. They had another song in mind for the album and they just like tossed that in as an other idea. And that's the one that made it, I believe. Which well, just, thank God it did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, truly an incredible song. Still sounds relevant and fresh today. My turn, your turn. Your turn. My turn. So... My next song, uh, also from In The Zone, I guess we'll just keep it in In The Zone, uh, is a little one called Every Time. Yes. Same with you? No. I okay. actually don't have this one on my okay. list. Okay. So for the stands will will absolutely defend this to this day as like the redeeming, like she can sing, she can uh, perform, she can. She is an artist. She is an artist. She is a musician. Because. She played the piano. She played the piano. She wrote this song. Uh, she wrote it um, in Italy at Donatella Versace's mansion. Uh, Rich. <laughs> or at least she wrote it part of it then. But she did. She wrote it with Annette Artani, the uh, backup singer that was with her on tour. At the time, Justin had just broken up with her. She was devastated. 
devastated. Cry Me a River came out and she was just feeling real sad. And so this came out and I think this is, so Britney's all about sex, but Britney also is really good at being totally emo and sad at like her She's most very devastating. fragile. Yes. And I feel like this is her most delicate song and her most vulnerable song and I feel like the, and it has like this weird cult following now. I mean, it was featured in Spring Breakers, which was very weird and interesting. And I think people, again, like similar to um, Breathe On Me, like it just kind of happened without being necessarily like a toxic as far as like the public consciousness of this song. Like people know every time, like, like, I don't know how straight people know it, but they do. They do. Um, Another live favorite for her. She, well. Oh my God. Live. Um, it really has. I I will say it hasn't really gotten a good epic live performance. No, it would for be being lovely. As great as of of a of a song and a moment mm-hmm. and a statement from her, it really hasn't gotten like a big epic. Uh, like not as SNL. epic as the video. Yeah, right. Oh, and I didn't the video even get into the video, which incredible is incredible. Sparked all these super uh, these scandalous rumors that she originally was supposed to kill herself and to take pills, and that the her Kabbalah bracelet was actually like blood that she had slit her wrist, and it, so that was its own like um, like folklore of the video, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, that that is like her. That was her darkest moment musically up to that point. Although lucky for Shadow. Another story. So every time for me. Well, and then the video is just so. I mean, I feel like it's one of her best videos, and it's a shame yes. we don't have it in HD. Ugh, tell which me that's about a different it. story. Yeah, that RCA. If you're listening, we need a new DVD with every time on it. Absolutely. But like, she's killed by the media in it. She's killed yeah. by those crazy paparazzi fans. It, that was really when Britney started getting very prophetic mm-hmm. and getting very. This is what you're doing to me. Right. She would do it again in like my prerogative and things like that. And it was like this was her way of clapping back. Hmm. Um. And people still mocked her and mocked her all the way up to when obviously she broke. But like this, this was all leading up to that moment. And so I, th- yeah. And it was about four years before it really got at its roughest. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Well, there was another song that you mentioned mm. in talking about every time that is actually on my list. Speaking of, I have Lucky yes. on here. Do you I, have that as well? I do not have it. It is very important though. I Okay, I really love that we don't have the same songs I know. so far. This is really crazy. Like I am kind of, like mine are more, I feel like commonly known, but I just love that we don't have the same ones. I know. But I have Lucky on here and I was thinking about it because I was like, it's not really like the best you know, like, it's not, like, super catchy. It's not, you know, it didn't, like, chart very well. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, like, super catchy. But I feel like this is a song that, looking back, was so foreshadowing. Mm-hmm. And such an inside look into her mind and in her world, where at a time where in the media, she, everything looked perfect. She was, you know, she had the man, she had the fame, she had the body, the dancing, the huge mega tours. And it, she all of a sudden comes out with this random song about this, yeah. you know, sad, brokenhearted, uh, miserable pop star. And it was almost like back then as a kid listening to the song, I was like, oh, wow, she's she's an actress. Right. You know, it's like, oh, my God, you know, Meryl's shaking. Yeah. <laughs> but it really was actually looking. I mean, obviously now, like years later, I'm like, wow, this was actually she probably knew more like there was more there at the time that we didn't know. Absolutely. Yeah. That was her first uh, Mona Lisa moment where mm-hmm. she was sort of like taking us in behind the scenes of what's actually happening. Whether or not she was really feeling that or if it was just a lucky coincidence that they lucky. I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. Reference. Uh, whether or not that was like intentional for her or not, I, I don't know because it was at the height of her fame. She wasn't really experiencing. I guess people were always intrusive from the very beginning i should say even from baby they were just like why are you showing your belly so yeah i i think that's such a huge part of the britney story is lucky because it's like she was on top at that Mm -hmm. moment and was like hey i'm still crying at night uh (laughs) yep yep it it was it was perfect i think she also did it live beyond just in the early days. She she briefly did it during Peace of Me, which was really weird. Yeah, it was very strange. She like and brought random. out a mini swing or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
the mix was really good from Piece of Me. It it was. But I, it was also kind of like when she, I think that's kind of why this is on my list because when she did it during Piece of Me, I was like, wait a minute. Mm. Like you have, hun- like at this point, I mean, there's o- over, there's hundreds of songs. Now, right. And you have, you know, a very selective few to do in Vegas. This seemed to me like a very, like, she chose this for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like, she, I'm sure she chose everything for a reason. Yeah. But I was like, hmm, are you still crying at night? And then she cut it from pieces. Like, there was yeah. a moment where it was there that was very interesting mm-hmm. in terms of timing. Yes. Which made me think, like, she put it in there. Well, she's always dropping hints at us when always. she's sad. Posting Instagrams and deleting them of, of mm-hmm. vaguely depressed things. Yeah, I would not be surprised if that was, like, a subtweet of an ex of some sort. Or Probably. just, like, getting mad at the media. She does have her moments. What is Roger Johnson doing these days? <laughs> is pop news still a thing? Probably. It's basically your website. I probably work Bradley there. Bradley Stern from Pop News <laughs> reporting live. It's one of the sites I've worked at. <laughs> um, so keeping in that general era, I will go with one that is probably more familiar to the casual fan. Uh, stronger. I have that too. Okay. Stronger. So my thing with Stronger is uh, I never needed a self-empowerment anthem from Britney um, when that whole era was happening in 2011. And she was like the only pop star who didn't have like a uh, firework, uh, whatever, all of them. We are who we are. We are who we are. It was always because like I found my empowerment through Britney existing and sort of enduring. And that was always like my thing with Britney. And that's, I feel like, a relatable thing for a lot of Britney fans. Totally. Um, but Stronger is an empowerment anthem, and she got in there real early with one. And the cool part about that song, beyond it being like super catchy and that opening honk that's like Just so memorable, like it. everyone knows what song's about to happen when that comes in, um, is the fact that she links it to her first single mm-hmm. with My Loneliness Ain't Killing Me No More. Uh, genius, and never happens. Nobody like re- references their own music really, well, rarely. Um, and that was such a nice little like tie in. Obviously, the, the video is fire. She looks Joseph so Khan. hot. Phenomenal. The pheno- the phenomenal, problematic Joseph Kahn. Mm-hmm. Um, some of her, yeah, I mean, the chair. I mean, the ch- like, everyone knows that. The chair, yeah. Also a video that we need in HD. God, Just yeah. Just another side note. Yes. Technical note. And she's got a lot of fun outtakes from that video, especially mm-hmm. on the Greatest Hits uh, DVD. DVD. Mm-hmm. Showing her goofy side at a time when she's, like, r- supposed to be super pissed. <laughs> she's just sticking her tongue out. Um, yeah. So well, I also it. have this on my list too. Mm-hmm. And it was a, a last minute addition okay. to my list. Yeah, it was for me too. But I was thinking about it and I was like, I normally don't ever really get emotional with Britney. Like we we're like mm-hmm. you were saying before, I was like, well, you know, I've always, I like never get emotional with her songs. It's more so like just her mm-hmm. as the person and her journey and just her experience or whatever. But when we went to <laughs> Peace of Me the first time in 2013, 2013 yeah. I got so teary eyed when she did Stronger live. Mm-hmm. And that was the first, like I... I admit I've cried at concerts before. Mm-hmm. Jonas, Brothers Jonas Brothers and Hilary Duff. I admit it. <laughs> a little bit longer and I'll be fine. Jonas Brothers plug. Um, but I got so emotional because I was like, holy shit, like here she is mm-hmm. so late into her career. And it was on the heels of the documentary, which had just come out, the I Am Britney Jean yep. documentary. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm just fucking proud of her. And I don't even care at this point anymore. Like she can do no wrong. She's reached that point with me where like, she could have sat in a chair for 90 minutes and I would have stand. Definitely. I mean, it's, um, well, there are moments, <laughs> there are moments. Um, but I just, I don't know. I felt like it was such a good, it's, it is an empowerment anthem and mm-hmm. she's now performing it. And I feel like it's, again, it's a choice that she does it in, in Vegas. Definitely. It's a choice that she still does it. And it, I don't know. It just makes me proud of her. I definitely agree. I think it took on new meaning for me. I never would have classed it as one of my favorites for, for years. And then, seeing a a piece of me mixed in with crazy is like such a good moment. And it really does kind of make you take it all in and kind of reconsider the meaning of that song. Mm -hmm. Um, also, it is current boyfriend Sam Ascari's favorite song. I believe he picked Stronger, which would make sense, like a mask bro. Right. Be like, sure, I'll take the, it's memorable. the song about m- strong. I like the gym. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> right. Um, no, we, we love him. He's super supportive. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely, Stronger is like, has only gotten more meaningful as time's gone on. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Me again, or you? Um, well, since we yeah, were just talking stronger. about, like, Piece of Me. Oh. That is also one of my top 
10 songs. Oh, okay. I see what you did there. Piece of Me on there. Mm -hmm. While we're, you know, discussing Piece of Me. Mm -hmm. Um, Also a later addition to my list, but kind of going back to how we were talking about like Every Time and Lucky and these songs that are more like reflective of her actual experience. Mm -hmm. This song I felt like was also very reflective of her experience with the media. And it was kind of like, Okay, well, let's cut this out. Mm-hmm. The little shit dog. <laughs> I think we're good. Is the door still open? No. Can you tell? No. Like, did it? Oh, I don't know. I don't think. Oh, yeah, it might be good. Okay. Um. So, speaking of Peace of Me, I feel like it is one of those songs that is so self-reflective mm-hmm. of her experience at the time. And it was the way that she did it in the video and the way that she kind of does it on tour and stuff, you can tell she has, like, fun with it. Yeah. She's kind of like, this is her F you in a way like she definitely has more of an attitude behind it like the other songs are like you know every time is sad lucky is sad why should i be sad like songs like that that where she kind of addresses her own situation are all very sad mm-hmm. this one she's like you want a piece of me like she's like i'm you know mrs she's too big she's too thin like she really just kind of goes off a little bit mm-hmm. and i just love it like it's just so good yeah it's not on mine, but it, it is a favorite for sure. Um, I considered it for a while. Uh, clearly, it is important to her, as it is the name of the never-ending tour slash residency for the past five mm-hmm. years. The past 90 years, mm-hmm. Piece of Me Live. Fun fact that it's Robin singing in the background, mm-hmm. which I think people always forget about. Um, yeah, I, it's genius. That's a. It, it was a mesmerizing song when it came out in 2007, and everyone was like, oh my God, this is like her condition right now. This is what she's going through. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I have any special memories of Piece of Me. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, besides the actual tour, which we've right. seen several times, but... We're really just... Yeah. Okay. I have a special memory. Oh. Um, let me do that again. I have a special memory with Piece of Me. Um, the first time I did drag, Piece of Me was part of it. Wait. The song Piece of Me. Oh. So I did a Give Me More Piece of Me. I did. I might have seen this. Moment. Allegedly, if it exists on the internet, I might it's, have seen she, it. She, it's private now. But mm-hmm. one day, one day I will, will I will pull it out of the vault. 10K RTs and we will leak it. Yes. 10,000 retweets and I will leak my drag performance video. It's, Honestly, make that happen. Um, I will say I did, uh, the mix that I made is so good. So it that's is. kind of like that era was just mm-hmm. the best blackout. Oh, yeah. Let's keep it moving. Um, I am going to pick another one. We're going to go back in time a bit. I actually have way too many vintage picks in retrospect, but it's fine. Uh, some days, if you ask me if this is my favorite song, I will say yes. Uh, Born to Make You Happy. Yes. I also have this on my list as well. Mm-hmm. Wasn't a single here. It was a European single, which was like super weird. I mean, it crossed over. People know that song here. But um, just exemplifies vintage Britney so perfectly. Vocals on point. Weird, dreamy video with hardcore dancing to a mid-tempo song. So Swedish and weird. Um, I I can't even quite put into words like why it is so important to me. Right. Uh, I will say the bonus remix of it uh, where she like does that <coughs> before. <coughs> yeah, her ASMR moment um, is as good slash even better. Um, I would say even better. Yeah, because you get those even more. Vocals, it's like more vocal. More vocals, definitely remastered. Mm-hmm. Um, pure pop melodies. I think it's just because it is so pure pop, like baby one more time era, Britney. Um, but it is a song that is not so played to death as played to death. Um, yeah, but it's really hard for me to articulate like why that's the song, but it is so important to me. Uh, I know, like I almost want to say it's definitely in my top three of all time uh too. And I'm trying to think, I mean... I think it it really is just because it's such a good melody mm-hmm. and it's so catchy and it's yes. really it's vocal Britney definitely vocal Britney and there's something very melancholy about it, um, it the, the lyrics of it um, I'm trying to think of like I don't know there's something about it that just screams Britney to me and I feel like a lot of Britney fans relate to that as well and maybe I can't articulate it that well but born to make you happy definitely it was born to make us happy it that's d- really, really was. all it is it, it, <laughs> That really is all it is. Um, yeah, I, I can't. I'll get too emotional about it. Oh, she's crying. <laughs> Everyone, no. Um, <laughs> yes, I also had this on my list as well. So next up, so I feel like, how many have we done so far? I've We've only shared a few. Yeah. <laughs> one, two, three, four. So I have four left yeah. on my list. The one that I know is my favorite of all time, I will say for the end. Yeah. 
But next up, I'm going to, uh, this is going to be a weird pick. And I feel like people at home listening are going to be like, are you kidding when I say this? But top 10 Britney songs of all time. Mm. This is one of them, in my opinion, from Glory, If I'm Dancing. Oh, I knew this was coming from you. And I was trying to think of like why, because obviously it's a meme. Yes. And so not just to self promo myself. But oh, some of, oh, do you make memes? Oh, no. The what memes? are those? Memes? <laughs> Me- Mommies? Memes? Moms? Um, not just because I obviously, this became a meme. Yes. And one of the best memes ever. The tap dancing witch <laughs> to If I'm Dancing. But I remember... Also, the, Wendy Williams is a, is a high oh, up there as well. <laughs> oh, that one is so funny. Yes. Um, again, if you're listening at home, uh, hit pause and go to Google. <laughs> You'll thank me after and then tweet me after and, and thank me because it is just... Yeah. It's something else. And you need the video version, not just like the song. You need the, the, the commercial yes. video because the dance that goes with it. Right. But um, yeah, so If I'm Dancing became a meme. But I remember the first time I listened to this. So I, when the first time I listened to Glory, this is going to sound so dramatic. And it was. Um, I was on a boardwalk and I, you know, I put my phone on airplane mode. I put on Glory and I was like, this is going to be a moment. Mm-hmm. No outside opinions. And the first time I heard If I'm Dancing, I just felt, it made me so happy because I felt like weird Britney was back. Yeah. Like, she's done weird songs before. Like, How I Roll, mm. Soda Pop mm-hmm. on the first one. Mm-hmm. Like, what are, I mean, there's so many weird yep. sounding songs. Like, she's really messed with auto-tune a lot. And like, not just like auto-tune to, to fix the voice, but like auto-tune to be. Sound as unnatural as yeah, possible. Like, like Brave New Girl, even yep. though it's like a fun, upbeat song. Like, she really does play with auto they play with auto tune there to make it sound i mean it's weird and this one is so weird (laughs) and has such a weird beat to it but it's so catchy and so good and just quirky and fun and i don't know it just made me happy that like being on such a later in her career album to tap back into that you know in a time where like any every artist it's like if you don't have a single they don't put it out right like it's like everyone had just had it needs to be all singles mm-hmm. so this being on an album i was like you know what that's fucking cool yeah and it's weird and it was a meme in 2016 <laughs> still kind of is yeah she's still relevant so that's why that one goes in my top 10 i support that um yeah i i know how hard you stand that song especially it's so good um yeah it is a super weird super good song um that just proves that like she's still making cool weird pop music um like, and it felt risky yeah yeah and it's totally i mean the, the lyrics are bananas they remind me of like girls aloud lyrics that like they almost purposely don't make sense like mm-hmm. my chakras the color of the chakras the like, butterfly from the bottom of the ocean what yeah what the fuck are you talking about um and that's like really fun and like jarring so i'm totally down for if i'm dancing good choice thanks um so i am going to keep it in the past unfortunately i have like a ton of vintage picks which i feel like does no service to her entire discography but like vintage is good yeah we're still on the baby album um i will be there I almost put this yeah, one. Yeah. And then I was like, that may be too vintage, yeah. but that is also, I, I support this a thousand percent. Yeah. This is the should have been a single for sure. Mm-hmm. This is the the missed like sixth or seventh, whatever single of the album. It screams like radio friendly. It is one of her best melodies, especially the bridge. Mm-hmm. Vocals all the way. It is vocals. This is vocal Britney at probably i almost want to say the best mm-hmm, mm-hmm. definitely the best yeah up there yeah because back in, back in the day when they were conditioning her to be more in the style of i don't want to hear any shade like baby mariah baby whitney like that vein of music they were pushing her to do vocals um and she totally delivered on this song this is like one of her most catchy from start to finish songs like pop melody wise like pure pure pop um yeah i i don't have a ton to say about it it's um also performance i feel like i'm giving you guys a lot of like pause and and google moments <laughs> but this song i believe it was 1999 yeah us open kids day arthur ash stadium <laughs> britney spears performed this sang it live while live. rosie o'donnell skipped around a tennis court with kids <laughs> and Britney just sang the song live and her, she had like a, um, an U S open tennis ball, green yep. dress with pigtails. And I think she had glasses on if I'm remembering it correctly. I believe so. Just like a pair of re- like random reading glasses. Yeah, she did. Yes. And just performed this live and it was ugh, 
so good. It just makes me smile every time I hear it. Mm-hmm. It really is vocal Britney at her best. Yeah. Would love for her to like somehow resuscitate it. It'll never happen. No, but it would be. Ugh. The true fans know about I Will Be There. They do. Um, how about I you? I Will Be There. <laughs> oh, I can't even hit the notes. Um, well, going in a different direction mm. from vocals to not really vocals. <laughs> um, my next pick, which I was debating, but I feel like this is. You'll you'll appreciate my reason for this song. Okay. My next pick is I'm a Slave for You. I haven't heard of that one. I yeah, I mean it, that it sounds you guys probably have no idea what song no. this is that I'm talking about. Um familiar. So I went with this one because it flopped in the charts, kind of. For Britney. Yeah, it's it it's didn't weird. Really perform well. It's weird because like literally everyone knows that song, but for the charts were such a different beast then. Yeah, it did not make much of an impact on the No. Chart. But the reason why is because it was her really transitioning her sound. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I put this in my top 10 is because she's changed her sound numerous times before. But this is like, we're going back like before streaming, Mm -hmm. you know, when the girls had to go out and buy an actual (laughs) CD to listen to music or whatever. You had to turn on the radio. I don't know if you guys know what that is. (laughs) But she performed this for the first time, for the first time ever. At the VMAs, and it is hands down the one of the most iconic live television performances by a pop star ever. I will not hear otherwise. Mm. And it was the first time anyone had heard this song. It was not on the radio. It was not out. It was literally like, Britney's performing a new song for the first time ever yeah. at the 2001 VMAs Tune In Live. And it was just like, it, it, it goes, it opens up. She's in the cage with the tiger. No one had heard the song before. Yep. This was its premiere. Like, it was no, you know, Spotify sessions live, you know, Thursday night at midnight leaked on every, you know, digital platform. This was like someone premiering a single on television, live TV. And it just so happened to be the, you know, with the snake, like just mildly Mm -hmm. iconic. And so I feel like that for me in looking back on her career is just in more ways than just the actual song. It is a moment that we never will have again. Like, I really honestly don't think that something like that will ever happen again, where someone premieres a new song on live TV and it's as epic and Mm. as memorable Mm -hmm. as something like that. Yeah. An artist should try doing that again, actually. Yeah. But I think about it. It would be amazing. Uh, Yeah. Um, I totally, it's not on my list because I don't know why. I, for some reason, when it comes to like favorite songs, I always like am weary about like picking the obvious songs, but like it is so important and it is the first time that she really switched her sound, like really. And look. And look. Yeah. Yeah. She teased it, of course, the year before with the stronger nude outfit, like, Mm -hmm. okay, we're getting sexy, but like this was like the ownership of it. Yep. And yeah, it was uh, life changing for us and uh, pop culture shaking for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Always. As always. Snakes have never been more iconic except for um, Taylor. uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, well, Well, at least uh, my fave held a snake and isn't actually actually a snake. Great. Um, So what's your next pick? (laughs) So um, since... We're calling it out with obvious songs. Um, I have to go with the most obvious one. Uh, A little song called Baby One More Time. (gasps) Not on my list. Yeah. But I mean. Unfamiliar to most. (laughs) Um, It. (laughs) So when I was thinking about like Desert Island songs, like I actually, I have to have it. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we just hit the 20 minute, 20 minute, 20 year, 20 mark. minutes ago, Brittany, the 20, Brittany minute mark. 20 minutes before listening to this, <laughs> you know, she just hit her 20 minutes of fame and it's about over, but, um, yeah, this is the 20th anniversary of the song itself. And, uh, this is like also why we're like doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, this is like the song that has embedded the most, the memory of seeing her experiencing everything, understanding what true standum feels like. Mm-hmm. We have been there uh-huh. since this song. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we, I, we talk about this in depth, like d- during the actual 98 episode, but you know, it is, 
too important, I think, for me not to like call it a favorite. Mm-hmm. And, and not just for Britney, but I think also in, in pop music, I yeah. feel like this one definitely is a moment. Yeah, not too many pop stars have legitimately modern history defining songs in their discography. Right. There are a ton of hit pop stars out at the moment. Um, will we be hearing, I'm not going to be that shady, but will be we hearing them in 20 years and everyone in the bar is singing along? Uh, doubtful. Um, and you just, when the song starts, like just that first two seconds, yeah. da da and it's just a sequence that is so simple and yet so iconic. And it didn't start by any means Max Martin, but it helped to propel him even further into pop genius land and making a million hits for everyone else. It is just the perfect merging of talent and producer and iconic on iconic. I love that. Yeah. Well, uh, next up for me, one of my choices is um, fast forward a couple of years from Baby One More Time. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say Circus. I was debating for a while. Mm-hmm. Yep. And again, I feel like all mine are like, they all have like some sort of moment mm-hmm. attached to them. Yeah. And I mean, this is a great song. It, I think it is, I want to say it's the best song on Circus, the actual Ooh, album. Controversial. Um, and also I just, I can't, the video is just so yeah. good. Deeply underappreciated. I so think. underappreciated. Yeah. And it just, I feel like it's probably one of her like most expensive. Yeah. It feels like it's the most expensive. Like for me, yeah. I remember, you know, coming out of the, you know, out of the 08, 07 moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then having circus like to be on this, like it was like rich, it was expensive. Mm-hmm. The choreography for the record, you got to see behind the scenes and the creation of this album and this video. I felt like it was again a moment where she recognized and was singing a song about her life. Literally all eyes are on her and it is a circus, but mm. it just felt like a more artistic way of doing it versus Piece of Me, which was very much like paparazzi and yeah. you know X17 like it was a playoff of paparazzi and media. Like this was her, Britney being, you know, production and artistic with just rich visuals yes. and I was like this is the legend that she should be mm-hmm. in an iconic epic music video I mean the, the scene with like the slow-mo and the fireworks Larry, Larry like is fireworks. just so good and I just you know I love this song um excellent choice uh definitely hovered over that one for a while um so important to the legacy of the the comeback moment and musically just an amazing song and visually i agree that it is like one of her best videos francis lawrence again um Also, the only thing that distracts me in that video, I don't know if you will agree, is that RuPaul's Drag Race season one sort of gloss around the sides. It's like sort of fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember at the time, like some people complaining about that. Like it's not a fully clear image ever. It's usually like kind of... Well, this one, this video did come out in like... 4k right there is a copy on online i think it's on youtube okay not promoting you know illegally published videos or anything Uh but no i remember it originally came out in like sd yeah and i i feel like i'm so like i'm technically (laughs) but like for such a rich video i'm like hi i need to see this in like blu-ray 4k Mm -hmm. gigantic um that one is like like stunning it is absolutely um yeah also promoting her perfumes in the beginning again Uh, once again we've got yeah we've got some perfume promo and also the um the earrings right oh yeah some like bulgari Bulgari earrings yeah they i don't even know it's a car i I forgot (laughs) yes she's certainly down for a little product placement um so okay so my next one is going to be also on the circus album um and (laughs) It's either going to be the one on the Circus album or it's going to be one on Femme Fatale. I literally have, down to this moment, to the wire, have to decide which one. Wow. I've thought about it and something tells me that I need to go with the Femme Fatale one. I don't, there's like a weird aura around Femme Fatale, Mm -hmm. the album. Of course, I mean, Dr. Luke's heavily involved. Her self was not as heavily Mm -hmm. involved in some ways, but hold it against me. I almost put this one as well. Yeah, 
I I have to choose it. I'll let you know which one I dumped it for. I remember very distinctly uh, crouching under a bush on Newberry Street in Boston when Bonnie McKee's demo leaked of it about mm-hmm. two days before her version. And they like rushed to tweet that like the new version's going to sound like so different. And it wasn't really. It's just Britney's voice instead of Bonnie's. Right. Um, but I mean that I, in retrospect, because that movement kind of died, but that was the first mainstream dub pop record with the dubstep breakdown Mm -hmm. that people reference i mean there were she's done sort of moments of it before like i think i think freak show had like elements of it um but that was like her she definitely got credit for like kind of bringing that mainstream oh totally and for better or worse because obviously that was then done to death as a trend in music um but I think that song has never gotten proper justice because nope. the performances during that era were right they weren't as epic as the... not as epic that's a generous way of saying yeah not as epic um whereas really that song is begging for like a fierce piece, piece of me intro or mm-hmm. like I mean, work bitch works really well, but there's something, something major needs to happen with that song that never quite did. However, it was a hit and I, t- oh, I mean the video for Hold yeah. It Against Me is That's one of why my I cut favorites. it off my, I had that one on my list, uh-huh. but then I was like, I cut it off because I was like, the breakdown on the video is very different <laughs> from the song. So I was yeah. like, well, technically that's not <laughs> the song. Right. So that's why I took it off my, my top 10 list. But I do agree about like the dubstep. Like yeah. it was so out of left field yep. for for a pop star to be like, what is this bridge? Yeah. Um, what is the sound? But I mean, yeah, this video I think is also like, I remember the poor girl at MTV who was like, had to sit there and like, cause we got it. I remember oh, in advance I before remember it had this. come out and they're like, we're going to show you this. You're not allowed to say anything. And so I had to go sit with this girl. I don't even know who it was. And she had like, you know, again, she was the only person that had like access yeah. to the file. So she was constantly showing people like mm-hmm. over and over. And I was gay gasping mm-hmm. and screaming at like every time she socked herself in the face, like during this like <laughs> fight scene, I was like, oh my God, this is inc- incredible. Absolutely. I Well, I did like a big analysis of the video, which I feel like is how like early stands maybe found my website, not trying to do promo, but like actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, totally. Because I took it seriously, I guess, whereas a lot of people are just like, that's weird. She's got paint. Um, right, like, I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, there were, like, a million weird Easter egg things about it, from, like, the weird facial gestures to, mm-hmm. like, all the symbolism of the, the rise and the fall, the knee, the the wedding dress, the, you know, breakdown, bipolar, like, fighting with yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it is, like, rich with meaning. And despite, you know, we, at the time, we were way too focused on, like, but how is the dancing? How is the dancing? Right. And, like, we were, like, promised that she's got the fire in the eyes of the tiger. Oh. Or whatever right, that bullshit Brian was tweeting at the time yep. about like yeah. oh and when the dancing like was not 2003 Britney or whatever like there was an uproar I feel like initially because it was like not quite as sharp as promised but that totally took away from like the meaning of the video which I think is way more important than like whether she hit the mark exactly with the dancing which was like not quite an important part of it um yeah and I feel like that's kind of one of the last times we got such a good narrative in a video from her in a Mm -hmm. really long time we've gotten fierce looks and like cool settings but like that told a whole story that I don't really think we've gotten before we've almost got it with perfume from what we've been told but Mm -hmm. that's been tucked away in joseph khan's office or like burned somewhere i don't know right it was also one of the last times she kind of switched sounds so drastically yeah what was like that was her like taking control of like the pop music Mm -hmm. sound and like everything since then she's kind of like fit fit into what's already happening happening completely We need another dubstep moment, Brittany. We do. We do. we need another uh, radio shaking moment mm-hmm. that will actually shake the table. Um, okay, I have... Well, did you get through all of yours besides the last? I have one last one, but that I is have, like the best one of all time, in I, my opinion. I have two, because I because we overlapped yes. more. Okay. Let's discuss those. So my second to last is... On some days, if you ask me, this is my favorite Brittany song, and I will continue saying that for each song. Um, and then we kiss. Interesting. Um, this is like my signature like sign off song whenever I DJ. I distinctly remember this coming out when it came out on B in the Mix, mm-hmm. which we all imported from Britney Spears.com. Mm-hmm. Imported, but um, 
something about it is like so adult and so it's chill it's laid back it's trancy it's it's very cool very cool and interesting um i have always been obsessed with the song i it has always been a favorite to me without exactly knowing why besides the fact that i love like trancy or house ear pulsations from her like breathe on me Mm -hmm. um so that fit that vibe perfectly and i just felt like of course it didn't but i was like oh my god are we going in this direction where it's gonna like go even dancey like is she gonna become like an above and beyond queen where she's like you know but um so the cool thing about that also is that it was a junkie xl remix that we've known for years and years and then finally about i don't know two or three years ago the original version of it leaked which was like slightly darker and haunted sounding and um not to toot my own horn but i like did some investigating and and contacted the original producer and he confirmed to me that that was like the actual original version um which was very exciting i still you know the xl version is probably still better um she did what she had to do with that she did (laughs) yeah i don't know it's that's just it's always been up there for me that song really has like rich production to it yeah it's very intricate definitely being, it's very chill obviously but mm-hmm. it's like i also feel like that was one of the times where she kind of yeah like it had this dark melodic intricate production mm-hmm. which she has had some crazy production and like all of these songs like these two especially kill me that i didn't list them tonight but like before the goodbye and I run away Mm -hmm. like BT did the did both or yes I believe did both of those and like the layers of production are crazy and it's so experimental and so ahead of its time but yeah she has definitely had crazy production moments and and then we kiss is is one of those really good so good moments so now we've come to the last song which I know that we both agree on yes why don't you go ahead and intro that I mean it's Britney bitch it's, perfect it's give me more like i know we don't we don't have like a you know a, a list in order no but like i will say that give me more is the greatest britney spears song of all time in my opinion <laughs> i don't have a number one but give me more is her greatest song yeah, of all yeah. Time. <laughs> not to play favorites but uh it's give me more um it's basically that meme where it's like i treat you all differently it's from arrested development and she's like uh, i never cared for it. oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> The rest of you can choke. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, uh, this one is my number one of all time. Yeah. And I feel like the reason why is because, I mean, the production is incredible. Danger, Blackout. Like, it It also, I mean, the, the VMAs, 2007, mm-hmm. which we discussed. But, like, to me, Gimme Me More is one of those songs that everyone knows. But it's also later in her career. Mm-hmm. And it's her one of her best works. Well, I mean, it's her best, in my opinion. In the darkest time and it's britney bitch transcends above everything it goes it back transcends language and yeah, space and time it will be forever in the future like mm-hmm. she will always go down as like it, it's britney bitch mm-hmm. like who is it it's britney bitch and that came from the song and so i have to praise this song and everyone who helped it happen carrie hilson included yes carrie hilson <laughs> she's quaking for making this happen and it, I mean, it gave us one of the most memorable in, in ways performances. Mm-hmm. And um, also, um, you know, just a meme. Yeah. Endless. Still. Yeah. Scream and shout. Oh, yeah. It's Britney Bitch. Recycled. Sampled. Yes. Yes. Um, absolutely. One of mine, too. Uh, if you ask me on certain days, it is also my favorite Britney song of all time. Um, and I think also a reason that it is for both of us and for many people who experienced this in school, either high school or college, it was college for us. Mm-hmm. Um, it landed exactly when the like season turned and it became chilly and mm-hmm. it, we had just gotten back to school pretty much. And it leaked along with Hot As Ice called Cold As Fire then, I believe, as a demo. And I just that is my maybe my most distinct memory is like opening the file hearing it and just freaking out that Mm -hmm. because she did it again not well reference um to like completely reinvent herself and we had been parched it had been years like aside from like chaotic ep and things like that it was like this is finally happening we're finally getting an album campaign and it was like one of those very rare times where it was way above anticipation like oh, which yeah. is impossible to do and yet yeah. she did it um iconic moments endlessly 
and so much much like every time like so much folklore about the video like so much oh there was a funeral scene like she died and and she buried the old britney and I, I mean like that's been debunked and and but you know like i kind of also like holding on to the idea that it was like mm-hmm. there was something in the video that we don't know about um and i think that for her it's just it did define her in a whole new way like Madonna has reinventions and I do feel like this was kind of one of those moments for her like thousand percent where it took her out of bubblegum world it took her out of slave slash you know sexualized and it became like even darker Mm -hmm. and obviously it fit the era so perfectly and it was just a moment I just hope she loves the song as much as we all do. I think she does. Who is it? And we, yes, as recently as 2018, it's gotten new life yet again. Mm -hmm. Thanks to one Stan, Zachary, who shouted it out at the Borgata. (laughs) Iconic. And it quickly took over arenas. Yeah, we love Give Me More. And we love the vine of that woman dancing on the tractor. Yes. Also, pause again. Yes. Go to Google. I'll give you a second. Uh, Vine, give me more girl dancing. It's a cat 3300 that she's standing on overlooking the LA skyline. Just really just sums up everything. And I think we know the person because it's a friend of a friend. Yeah, there's like a weird connection. Yeah, where there I, is. I could probably get in touch with her right. if I wanted to. Right. Maybe we- we'll interview her. <laughs> We really Honestly, should. Let me. I'll. I'll text a couple people. Like, is she aware of her yeah. impact? Does she know how <laughs> iconic she is? <laughs> Equally as iconic as Britney Spears. Yeah. Um, well, I, that pretty much sums up our lists. It does. To go over quickly, mine was three. If I'm dancing, I'm a slave for you. Circus, born to make you happy. Lucky, breathe on me. Give me more piece of me and stronger. And I had in no particular order. And then we kiss, breathe on me, give me more, born to make you happy. Every time, don't hang up, stronger, I will be there, hold it against me, and baby one more time. Iconic. All a good, iconic. A good solid list. Yeah. Now, in making this list, were there... I have a couple honorable mentions Mm -hmm. that I want to just include that were, um, you know, last minute uh, X offs of X X offs. What the hell does that mean? (laughs) That I X off at the last minute. Yes. Um, But these two aren't really like actually technically Britney songs. Oh. So, but I also would have put them in my list if they were, you know, is this about to be a Trisha Paytas shout out? Oh, no. But I mean, do would we we have time to talk about Freaky? Who wants to talk about Freaky for (laughs) the next 40 minutes? I will. Next episode, I'm just going to sit and talk about Trisha Paytas for an hour. Um, Bang. So I just wanted to give an honorable mention. I have a star next to this song uh, because it's technically by Will I Am, but Scream and Shout. Uh, Kyle been, loves I Scream and Shout. I fucking love Scream and Shout. Kind I of exemplifies it. New Jersey, also. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> it does. I would say like yeah, and because it it used to play mm-hmm. like when it, when I would go out in Jersey, like it, you'd hear the song. Maybe that's why I love it. I think so. God, I'm trash. <laughs> you can take the boy out of Jersey, but you can never take the Jersey out of the boy. Um. Yeah, also, it just, it, like, performed well with, like, the, you know, the charts and the straights. Yeah, and we got that, like, mainstream the love. The pony. It's just so good. And it's, like, like the accent, like, it's just, it's simple. Mm-hmm. And I just love it. And then um, the last one that I have on uh, an honorable mention, because it wasn't actually a song that it was ever finished. Ooh. But I'm going to say State of Grace. Uh, I was thinking of it, too. Which just, I, mm-hmm. I just wanted to also just get in there at some point. Because um, it's unfinished. The demo's on YouTube. Uh, don't sue me. I didn't put it there, but <laughs> don't sue the other person. And don't sue me for mentioning it. But it was just like one of those pretty melodic songs that is just very Britney. Mm-hmm. And like spiritual. I just love it. Very great pick. And eventually it was recorded officially by a French male singer, actually. I believe his name is Christophe. I, I'll check his name. Is it out? It is out. It's been out for years. Oh my God. Um, He officially recorded it. I'm going to look it up later. Yeah. <gasps> Um, very oh, wow. bizarre that it exists. This is a life changing moment. Yeah. I literally just learned of that yeah. right now. It's very weird. <sighs> Um, so those were good picks. Uh, I also have like a weird one that doesn't really exist. And then one that does, um, my weird one is a demo that was recorded. Some say in, in the zone era, some say circus. I think it was in the zone. 
uh, Strangest Love. Oh. It's super moody, super, like, I think it's one of her best unreleased songs. Um, it's just super hypnotic and slow and kind of, like, Sting-ish or Enya-ish, somebody said, I think. I saw somebody call it Enya-ish. But um, I... I've always loved Stranger's Love. It's, well, since it came out in 2011, it leaked. Uh, I return to that one a lot. It's just very haunting. And I feel like it really should have had a moment on an album for sure. Like as a vibey sort of like in between touch of my hand and breathe on me kind of deserves that. Like a be in the mix Mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Yeah. And my non, my official one is Cinderella. So good. I I was going to say this is, I feel like it's one of your favorites. Yeah. Cinderella. I am a Cinderella stan. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and I feel like a lot of people also like stan it. Um, I talked to the sky Ferreira years ago and she said that that was her favorite Britney song. And it's just cool that people like, like this Britney album deep cut. Um, very Britney, very, the, the bridge is obviously one of the best parts of that song. Mm -hmm. Um, It deserved a video. It deserved visuals. It deserved there, a tour there's performance, right? Like, yeah, like it has a narrative right there, waiting for you to do a Cinderella. She loves playing characters. Mm-hmm. Let her like wear a glass slipper. Like, let her do the whole thing, um, <laughs> and then run away. And then run away. And uh, and then seg into I run away. Uh, could be a it could be a film. Cinderella 2018. Honestly, I mean, Cinderella, I run away before the goodbye, like that whole stretch of like the end of Britney. Short film right there. Uh, Concepted. Done. Done. We're going to pitch it to Larry and he will not listen to uh, us. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a whole different story. Ugh, isn't it just... Um, anyway. <laughs> wow. What a list. Well, what let us list. know um, if you agree with us. Don't drag us for our picks but um tweet us and let us know yeah let us know uh what you thought of our songs what songs you would have picked Mm -hmm. how wrong we were in a nice delicate way (laughs) um (laughs) Mm -hmm. you can tweet me at t kyle mack (laughs) yes we can uh we can do the we can okay we'll do like the drop here Mm -hmm. so tweet us your opinions your picks everything else uh i'm at mu muse m-u-u-m-u-s-e and you can tweet me at t kyle mack t k-y-l-e-m-a-c and for more we can do like a like keep on listening to the podcast sort of thing yeah because i feel like this will be an extra one yeah um but yeah thank you guys for listening to this episode of it's britney bitch and we will see you guys very soon bye bye <laughs> also, like, that stuff's fine so yeah it's like whatever um wig stop <laughs>